not really. A couple cool things. Guys, what do you think? How hard is it to build a calculator in Scratch? At first glance, it's a pretty simple thing. There's plus, minus, and equal, and other math operators. So just put them together and voila! A calculator's done, right? Or not. We'll see that later, but does it really make sense to make another tool that calculates something? This question I'm going to ask to entrepreneur and software architect Anton Agnesimo from California. Anton has more than 20 years of experience in software development and has made more than 70 cool apps and hundreds of projects. And he's the creator of Calcularium. Did you want to say Calculator? No, I wanted to say Calcularium. Hello, Anton. Welcome to my channel. Thank you, Ricardo, for having me uh, on your channel. You're the first person I'm going to interview here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Actually, today I'm going to show how to build a simple calculator in Scratch. So I'm glad to have you as an expert who created Calcularium. Okay, okay. Let's start then. Wait, why and how did you decide to build Calcularium? Oh, uh, that's kind of personal need um, because I use like a lot of different calculators on my phone, but it um, was not enough for my needs. I want a more flexible, more interesting, like variable usage and uh, reusable, editable, descriptive, and most of other, other features like creating functions or variables or even using history uh, in the calculator. Um, that's why it was like a reason to create it, to use myself. Did it take you a long time to build it? Um... That took around one year of just uh, build it and probably like two and a half months on um, designing all. Actually, it was an iterative process. That's why it took so long. But yeah, that's kind of around one year and something. Okay. Did, did people help you or you did it by yourself? Uh, so like I have, it's like a team of two. Uh, I did most of the design and I had this like architectural uh, part of application. And I had like one more teammate who is uh, actually built most of the functionality. What programming language did you build your calcularium with? Uh, Swift, um, like 100% pure Swift. Uh, what age did you start programming? Um, it was at school time, so that was first as a Pascal and uh, a little bit of basic, of course, and then I moved to the C++. Um, yeah, so sort of like 20 years ago already. So did you did you have a computer at your house or did you use one at your school? Actually, I had a computer at home. It was my brother's, like older brother's computer. Okay. Um, but uh, starting actually coding at school because uh, at that time uh, it was like a first probably year when we started um, doing like any, any development uh, on, the, on the computers and it was Pascal, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, but it's first like what I started actually at school and then continue at home, of course. Okay, did, did, any, did anybody like maybe convince you to start programming or did you want to start it by yourself? Did you like it? It was like, I would say like 50-50. Uh, first of all, my brother uh, said if I want to bring friends play on computer, I have uh, to learn uh, how to code. And uh, he actually pushed me to learn assembly. Um, it was kind of a great uh, move from his uh, side because I wasn't able to learn assembly at all. And I had to spend like two years before I, I would be able to do anything, like even on a Pascal, for example. Uh, but then I really like it so much. So that's why I just uh, start using it uh, it's like every day because it's so, so cool. <laughs> Okay. Do you remember how, like, your first computer, how it looked like? Because mine, I I had one, but then it broke because I was running down the stairs. <laughs> uh, that was, you know, the huge one uh, with the huge monitor. Like, it's probably, like, three, four times bigger than yours right now. And, um, like, less in, in, in resolution, much less in power than your even phone you're using. Wow. Did you, did your did your computer have any like video games or did, it was it only for coding programming? No, of course it has some some game it had some games, uh but those games were primitive from comparing like nowadays in terms of graphics. Um so of course they play like Sapatlix, Pac Man, Prince of Persia, the most kind of a uh, famous one and uh Doom, Quake, that time was like pretty famous also. Do you remember the first program you created, like maybe a video game? You know, if, 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 if you're speaking about like small one, it was like hundreds probably, but it was small, like calculate something or show some um, like, you know, like simple graphics, let's say making snow, like falling snow on the screen. Oh. Yeah, 
that time it was so hard to make. There is not so much like uh, cool uh, libraries or graphics. Um, but the biggest one I, I created almost like at, by the end of my school it called um, Array Replacer. It was application for different type of replacement text in files. Uh, you know, even I, I tried to sell it through the uh, internet, but that time it was really hard, and I, I hadn't enough uh, hadn't enough uh, experience to be a successful course. But it was an interesting experience, of course. Do you, do you think Scratch is a good programming language for kids, or do you have a do you have a do you have a better one? Um, I wouldn't say that this is something good or something bad because different languages and different tools use them for different reasons. And uh, even if you're like using basic, in, like we do in the past, uh, for just understanding the structure or how to make something with your hands, just kind of telling computer to do something, it already was very cool. And nowadays, um, like to tools like Playground or Scratch gives more abilities and more um, like better understanding of what um, anybody can do. So not only kids, probably even some older people can play with that because starting with something is good and it's as simpler, is, is better just to understand how it works. So I think the scratch is, is, is very good for, for anybody who wants to start, start coding. What do you think was the hardest app you've made in? So far, probably Calcularium is uh, not the hardest, I wouldn't say the hardest, but uh, the complex one, just to, not in terms of development, but in terms of design and experience, user experience. Uh, because um, first of all, it's a lot of uh, calculators on the market and it's, it's really hard to kind of invent something new. Second one is just like building a calculator on a phone. It's not so easy to make it so complex at the same time, but, in, but it, 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 very easy to use. Because you, you don't want to type a lot. You want to use it more like a touch screen interface. And that was actually the most um, hardest part. To make it easy, but at the same time, it's so powerful. What platforms do you sell Do you sell your apps on? For now, just only Apple um, Apple platforms, so like Mac OS um, and uh, iOS mostly, and then a little bit of Apple Watch. Um, we're planning also to, to move some TV, but... Uh, didn't kind of figure out what the idea can be for this kind of device. Oh, can you can you download Calcularium on Apple Watch? Uh, yes, it's available on Apple Watch, and uh, you can do not only calculations. Uh, what is it? You can do you can do calculation as an expression, not just like one by one number. And also, you can do tips and uh, conversions of uh, units, currencies, whatever, just on your wrist. Right. Do you do you have a favorite function in Calcularium? Um, my favorite, um, I would say, uh, it, the couple functions and conversions, um, because it, it allows me to uh, automate my process of some calculations. Um, sometimes I'm, I want to understand like um, rating in the app store for the app, and I have to put like five stars, four stars, three stars ratings, and and so on, and see what the number it will be. So I just created one function and use it for that. Um, and the, and the currency converter is very useful when you, when you travel or you need to let's say combine. I know euro, um, Ukrainian hryvna, whatever in one just US dollar amount. It's it's so cool. What tech podcasts or vlogs do you listen to? Um, I'm not listening so much on podcasts, uh, but I'm um, reading a lot of um, such guy uh, John Sandel. Um, he has a, a blog, uh, not a blog, but a blog, but a website with a lot of articles. Actually, this podcast also, uh, Sweet by Sandel. Um, also, I have written a lot of uh, books from Paul Hudson. He's creating a lot of uh, great content for hacking with Swift, debugging with Swift. Uh, he has great Swift UI um, for, um, in the 100 days um, course, like free, and anybody can join it. And actually, I just check it, and it's very good for anybody to start with Swift and Swift UI if somebody wants. Would you Would you recommend a programming book to a kid? Do you have a programming book to recommend to a child? Ah, for kids, it's kind of a little bit hard to recommend, but I would recommend to use Playground on a, on um, iPad. Uh, they have a lot of nice uh, lessons and courses where you're not uh, uh, jumping right away in a very, very low development, and you can play with characters, you can do some sound effects or something like that with kind of pretty straightforward way. Is it hard to make a million dollars selling games on App Store? Yes, it's um, at some point it, it's hard. At some point it's not. It depends from many uh, many, many different uh, different uh, variables when you're doing. So it's not only coding. Coding is just a, a good part to build application. But then um, 
I have to kind of find the people who like it and uh, will be using this application and the marketing with the other part. Uh, but be, even before starting development, you have to understand that this uh, this need is actually uh, on the market and the people want to use it. So that's why the biggest part just understand the idea, implement it in, in the best way. That's why you need to learn coding very well. <laughs> so no bug, no crash, no problems with the application. Some days it will be like zero downloads, you'll be frustrated, it's kind of nobody likes my application. And someday probably it appears like you have 1,000, 100K downloads a day and so on. So they just uh, more about having stamina and, and, and move forward. Is it stressful to do programming for you? Um, mostly it's actually enjoying uh, to do the stuff, but sometimes, um, especially when happen, you, you can't achieve some goal or like some function because of, I don't know, like a problem with library or a problem with your code, you can, you can make bugs too. And, um, then it's a little bit stressful, but most of the time it's actually like a great journey to, to, to do some, you just enjoy and building your stuff. See like every day, new, new function, new screen is appears on, on, and your application you can share with friends or family and they will say like wow cool that work like that animation is nice and so on yeah so mostly it's enjoyable but sometimes it's less cool. so would so, you would you consider programming your hobby since you said uh, you like doing it it happens that for me uh programming is yeah it's like in my job and also a hobby so that's why i'm saying it's not a job for me because i like it um so it's a two in one it's a job and, and then hobby in one thing does calcularium cost money Yes, unfortunately, when you're developing, um, you have to do kind of, to do it for some that, um, to build it for being able to pre can continue making updates. So we need to kind of help from from people. But uh, most of the functionality is free, uh, so we can use uh, most of the stuff for, for free. Uh, just uh, here's like a small banner for supporting us uh, and being able to can, can continue building new updates. Um, but if you want support us for our like hard work, here's like subscription um, or one one time uh, payment for just a lifetime, and you can buy it and use it forever. What app that you've made has the most has the most uh, users use have you uh, that downloaded? Um, we we have the application called Glob Convert. Um, it has probably more than five million downloads, and uh, around like three hundred k people is using um, every month. Uh, that's so that's kind of pretty huge. Yeah, this one. That's a, that, that's a lot. About how much money do you earn on one on one app in about a year? <laughs> how old were you when you founded your company? That was like fourteen, almost fourteen years ago, like in two thousand six. So that's that was around like twenty one, twenty two. Why did you choose your company's name to be in Voodoo? Oh uh, yeah, the name was kind of pretty tough. Um, uh, I'm looking for something that will uh, em embrace my philosophy by the life. And uh, as I was at that time interested in Italian um, language, uh, actually I haven't haven't uh, learned it, uh, but I really like one word called Inverna from from Italian. It's called uh, winter. And uh, voodoo, of course, is kind of like um, spiritual um, stuff. Uh, so. For me, this kind of combination of these two words, it's 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 like a very freezing focus on something. So you're so concentrated on something, what you're doing, so nothing is uh, can distract you, and the, you're uh, in 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 the process and in be in, in the process make make it so cool, so like pixel perfect, uh, crash proof, anything like that. So that's why this kind of name appeared and. Uh, become like a philosophy for what we are doing at Envoodoo. We're just trying to build the best product as we can do. So like we started, we push our limits as far as possible. That's why we, we, we put a lot of attention on the user experience and the product design, not only on a development. So for us, like designing, it's actually design plus development. Development, not, not a part, like a separate part of development. It's also a design process because if you design your code well, and the, the product well, then you have a great product. Thank you very much for the great conversation. I hope you, I hope to meet you in person in California. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you, you too. Uh, it was a great to talk to you. And uh, if any questions, if anything I can help or like suggest to anybody, I will be 
definitely um, happy to do that and meet you in person, of course. Okay, thank you. Friend, I have more great news for you. After my conversation with Anton, he, I sent him a thank you email and can you believe it? He was so kind and supportive to you and me that he gave us a list of free lifetime codes for Calcularium. By the way, one license cost. All you have to do to get one is just download Calcularium on the App Store and in the comments below write, I like Calcularium, I want a code. Hurry up and make sure you don't miss the chance. Guys, I hope you were encouraged by Anton's app. And now we're going to build our own calculator to see how difficult or easy it is. First, let's create our setup sprite. Now let's prepare our sprites for calculator buttons. So I've created all sprites and arranged them in the setup sprite. Now it looks almost like a calculator. Now let's add a couple variables. keys but we don't have our calculator display yet. For this purpose I'm going to use my output variable and I only need to change its look. Now when I click on any digit I want to see it displayed here and here is another simple trick. Now it works just as I wanted. So I've added the same commands to all my digit sprites. Let's just copy a couple commands for the AC button from the setup. There might be different approaches to build your calculation functionality, and I spent some time. Well, I ended up with this one as a function for my equal sprite that can be called from other sprites when we click on them. So here ha is how it's gonna look like. Something is wrong. Okay, this is very important. We need broadcast, we need broadcast and wait here, or your calculation is not gonna work correctly. Now all we need to do is copy these commands to our mass operation sprites and modify them. 
Then I'm going to add proper changes to our function. That's it, our calculator's ready. Despite now it seems quick and easy, believe me, I spent way more time when I was building it and I tried different approaches. And if you noticed, I only have simple mass operations. There's no square root or fractions or braces. Feel free to remix this project and add way more functionality to this calculator. I'll be very thankful, guys, if you share your results on the comments on this video. That's it guys, I hope this video inspired you to become better at programming and love it even more. It does for me.